Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, as all of you know, a few minutes ago, the grand jury deliberating the death of Michael Brown issued its decision. It's now come that either way was going to be subject of intense disagreement, not only in Ferguson, but across America. So I just want to say a few words suggesting how we might move forward. First and foremost, we are a nation built on the rule of law. And so we need to accept that this decision was the grand jury's to make. There are Americans who agree with it, and there are Americans who are deeply disappointed, even angry. It's an understandable reaction. But I join Michael's parents in asking anyone who protests this decision to do so peacefully. Let me repeat Michael's father's words. Hurting others or destroying property is not the answer. No matter what the grand jury decides, I do not want my son's death to be in vain. I want it to lead to incredible change, positive change, change that makes the St. Louis region better for everyone. Now, Michael Brown's parents have lost more than anyone. We should be honoring their wishes. I also appeal to the law enforcement officials in Ferguson and the region to show care and restraint in managing peaceful protests that may occur. Understand, our police officers put their lives on the line for us every single day. They've got a tough job to do to maintain public safety and hold accountable those who break the law. As they do their jobs in the coming days, they need to work with the community, not against the community, to distinguish the handful of people who may use the grand jury's decision as an excuse for violence, distinguish them from the vast majority who just want their voices heard around legitimate issues uh, in terms of how communities and law enforcement interact. And finally, and we need to recognize that the situation in Ferguson speaks to broader challenges that we still face as a nation. The fact is, in too many parts of this country, a deep distrust exists between law enforcement and communities of color. Some of this is the result of the legacy of racial discrimination in this country. And this is tragic because nobody needs good policing more than poor communities with higher crime rates. The good news is we know there are things we can do to help. And I've instructed Attorney General Holder to work with cities across the country to help build better relations between communities and law enforcement. That means working with law enforcement officials to make sure their ranks are representative of the communities they serve. We know that makes a difference. It means working to train officials so that law enforcement conducts itself in a way that is fair to everybody. It means enlisting the community actively on what should be everybody's goal, and that is to prevent crime. And there are good people on all sides of this debate, as well as in both Republican and Democratic parties, that are interested not only in lifting up best practices, with, because we know that there are communities who've been able to deal with this in an effective way, uh, but also who are interested in working uh, with this administration and local and state officials uh, to start tackling much needed criminal justice reform. So those should be the lessons that we draw from these tragic events. We need to recognize that this is not just an issue for 